All right, good day, guys. And again, thank you so much for joining me. This is Sports Unscripted right here on my Color TV. And my name is Kezar Ebujie, the man for all who sees it. Here is a playground for banter. This is where football fans converge. It represents the badge in front of that jersey with everything inside of them. This is where passion is felt. We'll give you in-depth analysis, reviews, and previews of match happening around the world of football. And today, our spotlight is on Arsenal. They are poor, abysmal form. 15th in Premier League table. So, so shocking and embarrassing. That is why I have a guest with me. When I return, I'll let you guys in on the guy that will be helping me get through this. This is the man for all season, Kezar. I'll be right back. <music> Having played 14 games this season so far, Arsenal Football Club has been able to garner 13 points, the worst for like 46 years for Arsenal Football Club. The fans are not happy, the boards are really you know, a little agitated, and there's been this clamor from the fans the world over to sack Mikel Arteta. Now, this is something that is happening so suddenly, if you ask me. This guy's only been there for like a year. Now, Arteta, on his first season, won Arsenal an FA Cup and a Community Shield. So, so far, so good. Arsenal is not really the club that we used to know, like they've lost the fear factor. All that Arsenal has been known for is been fear and abysmal result. The last match they played against Southampton, their former player, uh, Theo Walker, said that he sensed fear in the midst of the Arsenal players when they were playing against Southampton. Now, this is something that we'll be talking about today. Arsenal, that's where our spotlight is. And I have a guy with me. He's a man who knows his way around football, like a man that, that does football and analysis for a living on a daily, day by day. So, the fine gentleman that has a very strong appeal, even when it comes to the ladies, man. So I have with me, I have Richie. Richie, what's up? I'm fine. How is it going? It's good to be here. No? It's good to be here. <laughs> are, you, are you a fan of any particular football club? Uh, used to be before, but when I started doing sports presenting, I knew I, 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 knew I had to pull myself off. If not, it, it would have been nasty for me at some times. <laughs> So if I could see things objectively from a different point of view, mm. not as a fan, mm. I felt it would help me better do my job. It's understandable. Yeah. Now, uh, Richie is like, sitting on the fence, not here, not there. <laughs> so it makes sense. All right, now, Richie, Arsenal is our focal point. Today. Yeah. I mean, it has really gone way ugly for Arsenal. Now, the, the, the question, first question is like, what, what went wrong? I think there are a lot of factors, a lot of things that went wrong for Mikel Arteta. You would always look at, first of all, man management of the squad. Maybe some other politics from outside um, the first team, maybe from the board or those who want particular things uh, from uh, Arsenal. They did well towards the end of last season, picked up the FA Cup. I also won the community show. So it looked like things were going to go well for them. But it was also visible that they were locking some of those games that they won. Uh, we had won, uh, Pulisic was injured, and we know how, uh, uh, how um, good Arsenal became right after that. So they, they've been fortunate at different times. But this season it got worse. They needed to bolster their creative midfield role. They were not going to play Messi to Zil, even though he played a good part of what happened last season. Somehow this season, a couple of things changed. His affiliation with the Turkish president seems to have a lot of effect on some other things, even in football. Because of his affiliation with uh, the Turkish president, he was made to look like an outcast of the German team. Six-time um, uh, a player of the year there in Germany, won the World Cup with Germany. They just started looking at him like someone who was irresponsible. Now, you look at um, his um, agitation concerning the Ugo, uh, Igor um, Muslims in China, how they are being treated. Arsenal never spoke up for those Muslims, and he felt that was a bit unfair. When it came to ta taking pay cuts at the club, when the COVID issue started initially, he said he wasn't going to take a pay cut because he did not know where the money would be going to. It was his money on that contract. They had no reason to take his money. He was involved in a lot of charities. If they're telling him 
to take some part of his salary to put in a particular charity that he can track and see how things are going to be taken care of, then he would understand. So a few of those things cause disaffection, but Mikel Ateta claims that it's his performance during training that is not up to the standard or level. But when you lose someone like that, you lose, uh, you don't have um, an Alex, you will be, uh, when Duzi had to go away on loan, there's not Torreira in that midfield. Especially for the creative part, you're going to have a problem. Eventually, he got Patty, he got um, uh, G Gabriel at the back. Maybe he was not involved in the signing of Saliba. Now, those issues concerning who can play and who can help the team started affecting the whole side. Because you look at, um, from the defensive position, Saliba had a better start compared to Gabriel in the French Ligue 1. But he comes to Arsenal and he's no longer that good. Mikel Ateta believes he's no longer that good. Because players want people who can help them at the back. Mm. He had um, an issue concerning keeping Emiliano mm. or uh, uh, Leno. Emiliano said he wanted to start games. He had stayed at Arsenal for a decade. Mm. Those issues here and there, he let him go to Aston Villa. He's no longer an Arsenal player. You have to now work with Leno and uh, another goalkeeper he brought during the transfer window, Ronison. Mm. All these things have an effect on the dressing room. Mesut Ozil is a leader. Uh, Papastodopoulos is an older person in that dressing room. They might be having some effect on some of these players because there's no proper understanding from the player's point of view why some of these players are not being used. Okay. Yes, Mrs. Ozio might not be a tracking back defender or box to box, but those clear cut chances you need Obama Yang or Lacazette to finish off, that is where you you need a player like that. William, them buying William must have uh, been a bit of a surprise for some players because there's a player that Chelsea would not have given three years. You give him three years in your club and you're paying two on, over 200k every week. It, those things could unsettle players. So they have a huge problem, both on the pitch, off the pitch. The players don't believe in themselves again. They, they're scared. All right, now, I've heard you. Now, if I can understand what you're saying, like, it went wrong when Ozil was no longer in the picture in that team, to an extent, because now you cited, like, a lot of factors that could have actually made us now nose dive mm -hmm. in very bad form this season. Ozil not, not really being the picture anymore, bringing somebody like William and paying that kind of money, and seeing somebody like uh, uh, Socrates from the team, and uh, maybe selling somebody like Iwobi. So you believe like if all these factors were actually in place, that Arsenal would have been maybe like way better in the position in EPL. Uh, They've never really challenged for the league in a long while. Okay. But one thing I know is that if they had all those things in place, they were supposed to sign Hussein Ha. Uh, yeah. from uh, uh, France, yeah, but yeah. That, that didn't work out for yes. them. That creative midfield needs to provide services for uh, their strikers. Lacazette, Aubameyang. Aubameyang has had two good seasons at Arsenal. He's scored a lot of goals right before he signed his new contract. That was the expect. In fact, it was like a new signing for Arsenal when he eventually signed his contract. And that is something that has not worked out this season. He's not getting enough services. He's not finishing off the little he's getting because it looks like uh, he's short of confidence. Good, he just scored uh, uh, the, uh, the, that was uh, over the weekend. During the week, actually, yes. uh, he scored against Southampton, but still it's not enough. If they have someone who creates for them, maybe they could play better football. Look at what James Rodriguez is doing for uh, Everton. He's the chief in that midfield, he's pulling the strings. It's like a full orchestra for him. He's telling, okay, this is how this is going to move. This is how this is going to move. If he's not doing that work, there's uh, Abdullahi Dukure too in that midfield. That is what Arsenal need. They don't have any player in that mode right now. So they, now sorry, that yeah, go ahead. Now, outside needing a creative um, mid, uh, midfield, just like mm. you're talking, um, Ozil was not really there when we played the the uh, one Arsenal rather played the FA Cup semi-final yeah. um, at uh, Wembley with uh, Man City. 
even at the final play, uh, play with um, Chelsea yeah. at Wembley, Ozil was not there. Now, what I'm saying in essence is that now, do you think Ateta mm. has something to do with what is going on in that club? Like, there's been there's been like word on the street, like yeah. rumors flying around that Ateta has like a bad blood, like a frosty relationship with some of these. Um, yeah, he's, as of last week. Mm. I don't know about this week, but as of last week. He was not in talking terms with David Silva, uh, sorry, David Villa. Not, well, not David Villa, sorry. Luis. David Luiz, I beg your pardon. He was not in talking terms with uh, uh, David Luiz. And this is also an accomplished player. Okay. He, I feel his career, compared to that of um, uh, Ateta, David Luiz has achieved a lot more compared to um, Mikel Ateta. So if you're going to be having an issue with someone like that, a leader in a squad like that, you should know that it will rub off on other people sure. because some people look up to them in the team. Sometimes you see some coaches leave the talking of the team to the captains or leaders of the team. Talk to this, talk to your mates, tell them to sit up and stuff like that. David Luiz is someone like that. He's played at Chelsea, successful at Chelsea, went to PSG, was successful at PSG, came back to Chelsea before he decided, okay, let me just chill at Arsenal. So these problems, you're having them with players it's going to be a problem for you. There was a time Hazard was um, uh, quoted saying that him and a couple of other uh, players were responsible for the sacking of uh, some managers because when you do not treat or act the way you're supposed to and they don't like you, they down tool and before you know it, you're sacked. So I can't say they're down tooling. Mm. But I just feel that all these little pockets of issues, he had a problem with Gwendozi yeah. as well Gwendozi left. Yeah, exactly. I'm not sure of... Uh, uh, what problem, if he had a problem with Torreira, but he's been having pockets of issues with different people. And I think his man managing skills are really not what it should be for a club like Arsenal. Okay, now um, we've cited the issue about leaving a creative midfielder, like the absence of one. And another one is about Teta's relationship with the club. Okay. Come January, if Arsenal decide to sign a creative midfielder while Ateta is still at the helm of affairs on that team, do you think it is still going to change anything at that club? It might. Um, Bruno Fernandes came to Manchester United mid-season and completely turned around Manchester United's season. Okay. If they get someone of that quality, he can turn around that midfield. We saw a few things Pate was able to do yes. with a with a few games he played, yeah. but he's not totally that creative a uh, midfielder. He's just that midfielder that's going to make it difficult for you to play from the midfield. Yes. But yes. you also have to remember that there are different teams that play different patterns. Yes. If they're used to you coming with one pattern, they will play you in a, in a particular way. Manchester City were caught off guard because of their particular pattern that Mikel Ateta decided to use something different. Yes. That was something that just got Pep's team uncomfortable and they were able to win that game. So different teams, different strategies, but you've got to have your creative hub. Jaka is not that creative. Uh, uh, you have um, who else in that? Uh, uh, Ceballos. I don't know whether it's the hair he cuts, but <laughs> since, he, <laughs> since he lost his hair, he has not been that creative in the team. You know, so it's, it's different levels of issues in that midfield. No one is really as good as they should be playing for Arsenal. This team of Arsenal would not have fit into the Arsenal of maybe 98 or 2003. There's no way they could have fit into that kind of squad because they don't have the character. They, they play football and they lose and they're just walking leisurely like nothing happened. There's, there's no fire in them. I feel they're a very weak set of Arsenal squad because... I've been monitoring the team for a very long while. And the caliber of players I've seen over the years, right from the exit of uh, Cesc Fabregas, Van Persie, uh, back in the day, the Nasri, I think the quality of Arsenal reduced a little bit. What they are fortunate uh, with is uh, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, because in a long while, they've not had a player in that shape. Apart from Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, then the young kid, Saka, yes. Even Pierre Emerick Obama is not even playing anything this season compared to Saka. Saka is like the only one carrying that team on his own. Maybe you want to look at Dabriel, but he also has uh, discipline issues right from France. Okay. If Arsenal fans should know, 
uh, all of his uh, discipline issues. All right. Well, about rounding off now, three red cards mm -hmm. for Arsenal so far this season. We had from Pepe, we had from Xhaka. Now the last one was against Gabriel. Mm -hmm. Now, do you, do you see it, like do you see something have to do with indiscipline in that team? Because at the time of Wenger, like you don't see things like this happening. When just the short thing that Unai Emery had with the gun, it's like you didn't see something like this happen. So, what do you think is? It's something they must address. If they don't address it, it's going to cost them a lot because. They're playing a string of matches back to back to back. You cannot afford to have people who are fit to play football sitting back and not being able to be called upon. It's something that will hit them bad. And for the reputation of the team, you don't also want to have the reputation of this team is full of rough players. Because once referees are allowed to that, even little mistakes could be punished for. And it's not good for... Uh, whatever brand they want to keep at Arsenal because they are gradually losing the value that people have of them because till tomorrow Arsenal is still the costliest uh, match per day um, ticket in England if you want to buy a, a season ticket you want to buy for um, just a, a day it's still the costliest in the whole of the world it's costlier than Barcelona it's costlier than Real Madrid in fact their season ticket can pick you season ticket of Real Madrid and Barcelona at the same time. So you can't have your fans invest in you like this and you still come up short. You're picking red cards. You're not winning your game. You're 15th on the table. Mm -hmm. And it's not like it's the first two weeks of the league. 15th. Right. It's, it's unpardonable. Now, if I should let um, Rishi, I think <laughs> Rishi will, be, uh, he'll go on and on and on and on because, as you can tell, like this is something that I like is ingrained inside of him talking about football. Now, before we sign out, mm. um, a few words. What do you think can save us now this season? Like, what do you think needs to be done to bring them back maybe to where they used to belong? They have to find a way to sit down. You don't, like, you don't have anything like that? I think they, they, they have the quality to do better, but mentally, are they in that position to do better? They need to reassess themselves mentally because Arsenal is not a club that buys a lot. Uh, maybe you give Mikel Arteta some credit because with the likes of Chelsea, Manchester City, you spend over 200,000 or 200 million pounds in acquiring players. Arsenal spent just about 68 million. If they can get one or two quality signings in January, which would be difficult, mm. it could help. But if it, that doesn't work out, they have to think about reinstating some players. Re see if you can reinstate some players. Make proper use of them within this period. We have a lot of games to play, and maybe they can be in top 10. Just maybe. <laughs> All right, just maybe Aston might find themselves in top 10 because, as it stands now, it's really something very, very mentally disturbing. Because even the smaller teams now, when they come to Aston, they believe they can actually take a three point now, making them put Aston out for that more pressure. Okay, now, before we sign out, because we don't have time, Aston effort in this weekend, what's the scoreline? I think Everton will defeat Arsenal, maybe two goes to one. That's what I feel. Okay. If their fit players are available, Dominic Calvin Lewin does not wait for two chances. Give him one, give him a half chance, he will make use of it. Richarlison is in good form. He wants to score back to back. Okay. Arsenal have not really, uh, sorry, uh, Aubameyang has not scored consecutively against Everton away from home. He has had more dominance on, or rather over um, Everton. Away, sorry, at the Emirates, okay. but away he has not also been that proficient. So, who they are going to rely on is going to be a problem. But I can assure you, if they start William in that game, they are probably going to lose <laughs> with a larger margin because I still have not understood his major role in that squad. I think he's just a squad player that doesn't deserve to start. I believe he has on his, <laughs> on his contract, <laughs> so now, maybe there's a lot of time, but it's, okay. it's a no brainer at all. All right, thank you very much, guys. Now, we don't really have much time to talk about maybe many things about Arsenal because if you allow us, I think you need to go a lot more in depth before you took it. Now, we have many matches coming on our screen this uh, weekend. The EPL is back. Um, I think we'll be having matches come to our screen. It's 3 3 of days matches because the X matches there just to keep everybody entertained. Okay, I want to say a loud thank you to Richie for coming. Yeah, yeah, it was my pleasure. All right. Um, you guys will be hearing more from Richie, I think, from time to time. All right, guys. This is where we'll be.
maybe put a wrap on our, on our today's uh, program, which is titled Spot on Scripted. This is the man for all season, Keza. Follow us on social media handles at MyColor TV, no space in beats, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, as well as Twitter, when I bring you up to speed around the world of football. This is the man for all season, Keza. I guess I'll see you when I see you. Stay safe and bye-bye. My Color TV, life in living color.